is Archie Luxury here, Archie Luxury Program. And uh, today we're talking Omega Seamaster versus the Omega Sub... Well, Omega Seamaster versus the Rolex Submariner. Two icons in the dive watch genre. Now fuckers, now fuckers, now fuckers. I've got to tell you, I've owned a few Omega Seamasters in my time. Did you know, before the Rolex 1016, I actually had a dress watch type Omega Seamaster, which was a... Uh, 80s quartz piece of shit. But, fuckers, you understand. You understand what I'm talking about here. You understand. And, and I mean, fuckers... The Omega Seamaster, whether it's a vintage Omega Seamaster 300 or the James Bond, it's, how would I put it? It's one of the heavy hitting pieces in the range. The Rolex Submariner, whether it's the No Date, the Date or the Two Tone, or the Solid Gold. Bang! Whack! Whacked in the face with a Rolex solid gold. Look at that. <coughs> What's my verdict? What is my opinion? What the fuck do I think? And I, I gotta be completely, brutally honest with you. The Seamaster and the Submariner. It's like the classic fight between Mercedes-Benz and BMW. It's one of the all-time great battles. What do I think is the greatest? What do I think? Well, let's have a bit of a recount. The Omega Seamaster 300. And I've had the Quartz. The Quartz one. Yes, the Quartz. The same one Gregory Kinder. Not the same one, but the same model that Gregory Kinder has. What do I think of the Seamaster? It's quite a nice watch. The beautiful blue, the wavy. It's Omega's version of Gillishay. Gillishay dial. And, you know, it's, it's kind of cool because it's got the, the helium escape valve on it. So you think, hey, that, 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 that can work. What do I think of the Omega Seamaster 300? You can get it as an ETA automatic or an ETA quartz. Ah, uh, it's an okay watch. It's okay. It's okay. However, when we compare it to the Rolex Submariner, the Rolex, whether it's a no date, whether it's a date steel or a two tone or a solid gold, it's a cut above, fuckers. I'm sorry, I can't lie to you fuckers. The Omega is not as good as the Rolex. The Rolex is clearly better. I mean, I've got to be honest with you. Everything about the Omega Seamaster, it's a cool piece. It's a great piece. It's done a bit cheap. It's just not a Rolex. The Omega Seamaster itself, it's one of the, it's a classic piece, it's a great piece. Second hand, I mean I sold my Seamaster at auction for about 1100 bucks. They're good buying if you can find them. However, the Rolex is a cut above. The Rolex is a cut above. And uh, I'm gonna put a I'm gonna put a series of videos together. Omega Seamaster versus Rolex. We're gonna look at some key criteria. We're going to look at the watches themselves, the buyer profile, and the Archie Luxury opinion. We're gonna put together a collection of videos about this beast. That's right, fuckers, about this beast. Archibald Chesterfield III is putting a vid together. So, fuckers, if you've ever wondered, Seamaster 300 or Rolex Submariner, I'm here to answer your questions. 
In my opinion, there can be nothing finer than a Rolex seagoing beast. It's the quintessential sports Rolex. And uh, fuckers, I'm sorry, but Rolex is so much better than the Seamaster. The interesting things is, the demographics of both these pieces, we've got young punks, tertiary qualified, recently tertiary qualified, who thinks the sun shines out of their asshole. That's the buyer for both of these pieces. And they got huge ego, huge ego. But uh, it's not just ego. There's some very other different things. There's Archie Luxury's opinion. And that is worth huge stead, fuckers. That is worth a big chunk. A big chunk. So, uh, fuckers, I'm going to be reviewing both of these watches in detail. Stay tuned. Omega Seamaster versus Rolex Submariner. The Archie Luxury verdict. I'm Archie Luxury. Tell me what you... Fuckers, think of that. Nice one, Archie. This will be a good series.